afternoon and welcome to the lab. Well, I've gotten a bunch of questions lately about the HPE store once and the replication and different issues like that. So I wanted to take a couple of minutes and walk you through that. It's pretty straightforward uh, how they're set up and where they are. And if you haven't seen their interface, I'll pop one of those up as well. These are the VSAs, uh, so they're virtual and they're running out of vSphere 7 in my lab. So first, let's take a peek at uh, the interface itself. Let me run down here to one of the store ones and we'll log in. Now here's one of the ones that I've got. I've got a pair. Uh, very straightforward. It comes up quick. It's very slick. It took, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes to install. This one's got six terabytes of storage on it. Uh, the one I'm replicating to also has six terabytes. But it gives you a pretty straightforward look at, uh, you know, the CPU, the memory, what's going on. I only have Catalyst stores on here, which is exactly what I wanted. I also have reports, which are kind of slick. I can take a look at, at resources, uh, interfaces that are there, um, replication and copy backup stores. If I was connected to the cloud capacity or the cloud bank, excuse me, we can check that for uh, connectivity. And of course, my capacity and what hasn't hasn't been used. But it's very slick. Uh, you know, I like the fact that it's very clear and concise. Um, so we'll go back here and let's minimize this now. If we take a look inside the lab, this is 10A, and I've also got the AWS plugin installed. So if you don't have the latest version of Veeam, you need to jump out to veeam.com, go into the downloads, and pull version 10A. Uh, it has all the nuances and changes, I think around 1,200 of them, from the original release of 10. So go in and grab that. So let's take a peek down underneath our infrastructure, and we'll look at our repositories. And there's a pair of them. I've named one of them Target because I'm going to use this one as my repository, but this is the one I'm going to replicate to. Now remember with the store once units that you have, you are going to replicate the entire repository. We can't go in and say, hey, I just want to do these backup jobs or this piece of information. It's repository to repository. Okay. So I'll right mouse click this and let's look at the properties. And of course, I just named it store once, and yeah, I didn't spell it correct on purpose. Uh, I wanted it that way so I would kind of jog my mind of what it was and just make it a little bit different for me. There's my admin credentials that are there in the IP address for this particular one, okay? We'll do next here. Uh, I've gone into the Catalyst store, and as I told you when we were looking inside the interface, I did create a Catalyst store inside of there. Pick it check it and here I'm going to limit it to four tasks. From there I'm going to do next and I'm going to enable NFS but I'm also going to make sure my caching is here and my mount server is here. This is where my mount server and that NFS portion is going to run from. I'm going to do next here. All those things have already been installed. Then I'll do an apply here if that's what I'd like to do. I always have the ability the first time that I put these in place, if there's any existing backups here, I can import those rascals right in. But that's kind of the setup. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, we'll exit out of this. Now, the thing that I think a lot of folks want to see, which we're going to look at right now, is what am I going to do if I want to do replication? Well, I've got my backup copy job here, but if we go into backup copy, Here's my store onces. Once I've got them built as repositories, all of a sudden now I have this option pop up on my menu. I can click here and we'll just call this a test. <laughs> Do next. Now it's going to say, hey, where are my repositories? So I'm going to pick source and target. Okay. Here's my source. Okay. Here's my target, thus why I named them that way. My target could sit in California, it could be in Canada, wherever we choose to put that target at. But remember, naming those inside of your interfaces so that you can see what you're moving data to is going to help you. Many of my customers have 40, 50, 60 different repositories globally, and they need to be able to see where those things are located. So use names that are going to make sense to you. Okay. There's my repository source, my repository target, 
I do next here, then I get that awesome menu from 1905. <laughs> I love this old NT menu. You can go in and highlight whatever you want. You can disable those hours, make it so that it's going to disable those hours, or you can change and check anything that you want. After that, you do an apply and then do a finish. But we're going to cancel this because I've already got it built. Okay. And inside of here, if I go take a look at my job, this is going to do my copies because down below, let's look at my HPE store job. I'm going to edit this. There's my virtual machines where they reside. Here's the storage that I'm initially dropping them to. Okay, I'm gonna dump them on this store once here. Okay, we'll cancel that out. And then my copy job runs from here. And you can see we've done very similar. There's my, as I showed you the build, store once to target once, schedule and summary. Okay, that's pretty much it. It's very straightforward. Uh, I can take you in real quick. Let's take a look inside of vSphere. So I can show you this, just so you can see the virtuals that are running in there. There's some clusters, clear this. Let's take a look, here's my store wants. Yeah, they're very straightforward. CentOS, there's my IPs, and my storage that's attached. Well, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you've enjoyed that. Again, Great tool with the HPE store ones is a replication back and forth to different locations, uh, fully supported by Veeam. Take a look on our website if you need more information, veeam.com. Take care. Talk to you soon.